Okay, we'll call the meeting to order and do roll call. Takarian here. Shabilsky here. Grovener here. Sanders here. Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice, justice for all. <coughs> or anybody in the room here? So there's no correspondence. So let's go to moving our minutes from our number 20th meeting. Move approval. I second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Can I just can I ask one question before we? The uh, 1013 Public Service Commission 2022-2023 Utility Advanced Assessment. Never, I don't remember us doing that. I don't know what that is. We do that every year. Um, we get the pleasure of being to the vote. Yes, they, yeah, it, they charge that um, for every utility. I think it's usually some percentage of revenue or something. Okay. So would sewer have to pay a portion then too, or just us? I don't believe we have sewer because it's sewer's not under the guise of the PSC. Okay. Perfect. Okay, so motion carried. Move on. Vote your list. Make a move to approve. Second. 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 All in favor say aye. Aye. Motion carried. Support on the second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Report on our water system. Good evening. Um, last month was well, fairly busy, but good for the utility. The water, water budget was completed and handed into Denise uh, and her department. I attended the American Water Works Association 101st Annual Conference in Madison. It turned out to be a good conference. Learned quite a bit. Um, water mains built and tested in the southeast section of the city, dug, dug up and repaired on 60th and West Ryan Road, the intersection. We had a water curb stock repair at 3134 West Thorncrest. We removed it out of the driveway, looped it out and looped it back and driveway uh, concrete restoration and driveway uh, concrete restoration was completed on october 7th we had a six inch uh, lateral horizontal split at the uh, franklin foliage center which originated at an air release in the middle of the driveway as close as we can figure it was about two months before that they had their driveway paid the trucks are going back and forth over it. That was the beginning of the end. Um, we lost about 300,000 gallons that afternoon. Glenn Birds, I figured, calculated it. Um, the meter change out program, unfortunately, has come to a halt. Um, ordered meters at the end of June and was told uh, this past month they won't be available until uh, sometime in 2020. Um, so that means, um, so that means when our budget's passed, I got to order 2023 20, meters right away. Um, all the meter bolts were drained, pumped out, and meters removed for the winter. Um, meter reading was completed with no major issues uh, this past quarter. The utility crew attended the uh, city of Greenfield's annual public works. So, um, a couple of weeks ago, one had great uh, grades and comments for that. Also. Is there a reason? Is there a reason? Are, is there much higher demand for people getting meters these days than normal? Or here again, it's supply chain and chips are the main reason for electronic. Yeah, 2022 is you know, 
to buy a dump truck, you put your name in the lottery, and what you get. You know, it, the old days, you got one two months after you ordered. Mm -hmm. that so, anything metal, uh, ductile iron, pipe, absolutely crazy. Uh, even even cement, very tough to come by. We hear all tough to come by. We hear all kinds of horror stories that you know you, you can't buy the higher strength cement anymore, concrete, because it uses too much cement to mix. In the old days, if it rained, if there's a rain day, you kind of pushed off your order. You know, if you order concrete for next Thursday, you got to come pick it up Thursday, Thursday, Thursday. Weather can uh, trucking issues, supply issues. It's just top to bottom. It's hitting us from every side, making the cost of everything go absolutely crazy. Cost. So then, Mike, for prioritization, that's why you're not doing your change out your head. Six meters left, and then what I'm doing is taking the old ones, asking them, sure. refurbishing. They're go they'll go in the system um, until the new ones come in. We'll have a separate list. Go back and change them out. Um, same issue for the last what, six months with meter horns. I finally had to tell the plumber plumb them in straight. And keep a separate list. Got to go back. Their response to get Can you answer one more question for us and answer when the um... straight keep a separate list of that attack? Their response to get in the water. Can you answer one more question for us and answer when the um, six inch horizontal split? There's 300,000 gallons of water that was lost. Oh, call. I was leaving City Hall here. Phone call came in. I was there. Oh, oh excuse me. How quick we know how much water we let lost? No, how quick we could respond. We were we responded within 15 minutes. The truck was there with all the equipment we needed to shut the water off. It was about 35 minutes. Oh. If, if you want to see amazing. Yeah, I'm sorry. If you want to see something amazing, go by the Polish Center, look at their parking lot. You'll see the basically the parking saw that was dug up. We had, they had a contract to come and dig it up. Um, the uh, water basically basically lifted the asphalt. There's like it looks like a big bubble in a couple places, ripples in other places. At the end, you can see where the you know, three or four inches of asphalt just lifted up, washed a bunch of gravel out. There's, there's got to be big pockets of poison there, gravel washed out of their detention basin. Um, they've been told, the Polish Center's been told by their insurance company that they're not covered for that. Um, oh, wow. I, uh, you recall the fire department asked us to go around and start adopting these leads, going to all the buildings. For some reason, we don't believe that this was ever done. The CSM in 2003 or 2006 happened. There is a note. Uh, unrecorded easement, as we could tell, was never recorded to the city. Regardless, it was I'm sure that would have been our fault anyway. But um, this, it, this may come back up in conversation. This is going to be a very expensive fix. Back up in conversation. This is going to be a very expensive fix. Grab the parking. Because normally, would that, under normal circumstances, in another building or something, would that? I, have been I, believe, I believe our standard language says that we're responsible. To, I believe our standard language says that we're responsible to fix the pipe. We're not responsible to fix the surface and landscaping and other stuff. Right. Not seeing what this other easement may or may not have been recorded. I don't know what that language says. They'll have to prove to us that we actually own that. But I'm, as of right now, I don't believe we owned it. You need to look for it, and I have it. I believe our standard language in the future, we will make sure. That it just we're responsible for the pipe, but none of the landscaping and surface. And, and that's, a, that's a prime reason as to why, why someone wants to dedicate the lines to us, we'd have full time inspection looking. Um, that really should have been removed back when the building was built. Hmm. So what, what, uh, one more question, then I'll be quiet. 
we had a tower that got affected with 300,000 gallon swing somewhere. You want to take that question? <laughs> there was a tower that was affected with 300,000. The Polish parking issue, 300,000 yeah. gallons. Which, which, which tower got affected? Interesting. Did they, didn't, did they didn't do Digger's Hotline before or wouldn't have found it? So, so to reiterate, what happened is when the building was built way back ever, they yeah. brought a pipe in and had some sort of a blow off valve. Our thought is that paving equipment just drove across the dam and it, it basically had a five foot long split in the PVC pipe. So basically, it split the, the pipe out. Because they weren't digging, they were just they, they were not digging, they were just paving. So the combination of all that equipment bouncing on it probably pounded it into the pipe. So they get to resurface it twice. Probably pounded it into the pipe. So they get to resurface it twice. Yeah, they got to yeah. replace some gravel yeah. and dirt. And yeah, it's an interesting, let's see the power of water, go out there and look at it. Okay, next item. Number six. Number six. A water tower design update. Projects, thankfully, are out to bid right now. As of this morning, there were nine plan holders for each each contract. And split the project into two contracts, the work within Highway 100 and the work on the site. Um, Bob, when I got here, there was another one or two plans that were picked off for the uh, transmission main. None, none of the big three contractors in this area have pulled plans at this point in time, that being Super, DF, Thomasini, or Globe. Um, surprises me, I'll probably reach out to them and just let them know that the project's out there. We want to get the best price. Um, we're taking uh, water main bids on November 10th. Um, Pre-bid meeting for the water tower is going to be downstairs on November 17th, and we're taking bids on the tower on December 1st. So Got all kinds of stuff for Glenn to, to share with Mike and, and the clerk and the clerk. Uh, we do have a, a public meeting, uh, actually a neighborhood meeting, uh, for the folks that are affected or will be assessed for the water main along Highway 100. We're going to have it next Monday evening at 6 o'clock at the Pike County Baptist Church that's right there in the project area. So uh, in the project area. So uh, for the folks that contacted you previously, they contact you after you have a conversation about, you know, the assessment. You'll be thoroughly explaining that if you need. I'll do my very best. And we'll, and we'll have more than dollar amounts until we collect it. Anything else? I still owe you a cost estimate by the end of the week, too, for in preparation for that public information. Part of that, and we'll, I was going to put on site, I was on the next agenda, but um, tonight at the Common Council, but um, tonight at the Common Council meeting, I'm taking the new policy about um, uh, assessing for for uh, services, and we'll put them in for everybody. Onto the file. So um, after it passes, I'll take a copy of the actual resolution. After it passes, I'll take a copy of the actual resolution that passes. I'll put it in the council packet. But that'll be a discussion because, by and large, almost everyone up and down there does not want the water project, but there are several that are going to be assessing. Mm -hmm. I'm sure that's going to be a discussion too. But look forward to it. Okay, next item, Carranza or Lou. So I, I put uh, some things in your packet. Uh, one, just a reminder of what the city naming policy is. Uh, it really just refers to buildings. As you recall, we. We uh, named our new utility building after Jack Bennett. Um, I put in there two pictures that when you go out to the water tower, there is a, a plaque and a tree for Herbert Gershke, who was a founding member of the water commissioner. Um, there is another plaque, and I understand that there's actually two trees, uh, actually two trees out there. So it appears that after uh, Mr. Gershke passed away. They decided that everyone would receive, basically they would get their name added to a plaque so you don't have multiple plaques around around the site. I did talk to um, 
Mrs. Grace Tom, whose daughter-in-law, Tucker, I think her name is Kathy, I think it's one of Luke's son's wives. And she says they would very much appreciate the ceremony and, and going to the tree and so forth. I had the opportunity to talk to Jack um, at lunch last week and ask him the question. Talk to Jack um, at lunch last week and ask him the question. He couldn't remember why there was a separate plaque, but I'm just going by what clerk's office recalls may have been the reason. Perhaps you remember you've been on the board long enough. But um, the other thing that Jack had the thought is maybe. Uh, it might be also appropriate. Um, the other thing that Jack had the thought is maybe uh, it might be also appropriate to name the conference room at the utility building the, the Grave Conference. Room. So Jack did Jack did feel that Lou's contributions to the board of Oak City, but uh, and you you knew him better than I did. You served with him a lot longer than I did. So, um, that, that's the information I've gathered. Uh, 300 bucks for a tree is what uh, I can get from my DPW. Uh, depending on what you want on a plaque, I'll, I'll have to Depending on what you want on a plaque, I'll, I'll have to quote that. But if you think it was worthy of a individual plaque like Jack thought, or you should have his name added to the plaque down. Actually, open up for I think we should just pull that. Sure, and separate plaques apart. But in the case of, you know, where Jack suggested naming conference, yeah. you know, that's so, what we done too. So before you leave that first one, Mike did mention that. So, yeah. so that's, we're that's looking right. tree and the small yeah. name. Okay. And then I get discussion of the future. Yeah. That's appropriate. So do you need a motion? Um, that would that'd be helpful. I have a motion. I think that'd be appropriate. We will work on the details and have a ceremony. Work on the details and have a ceremony accordingly. I'll make a motion to to put Rafe's name on the existing plaque, plant a tree, and name the the water. You're okay with all both items in one day? Yeah, everything's okay, fine. Good. Okay. Second? Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carried. Track of Tim was track of Tim was you know, that was a thought. I, obviously there's been more folks that have been members, but I don't yeah. know. Might depend on how long you serve. Yeah. Hey, for the record, just to let you know, um, back in 2003, we served the April 29, 2020. Okay. New business 2022 third quarter utility building statistics. Send some information around. Is this what was in the packet? There's one change on that, okay. so I wanted to resubmit, and then the budget is not in the packet. So in your packet, you have the statistical yep. page, you have the replacement. Okay. And then uh, there's two words budget. I didn't know exactly what you've seen in the past or how you like to look at it, so I printed it. All right, so um, the first item on the agenda is the billing statistics. So that's the page that I'm having sent around. Um, the replacement had to do with the revenue section. <clears throat> and then there is actually still one additional change that's coming. There was an irrigation billing correction that we need to account for on here. But I just that's the yeah. So um, if you look at that, look at that single sheet, um, you can see that the gallons used are running below last year and budget for both the quarter and year to date. Um, if you look at the top section um, for the quarter, usage is down 8.6, or sorry, 8.5% roughly. Is 
down 8.6, or sorry, 8.5% roughly um, to budget and about 5% to prior year. <clears throat> the trend um, is similar for year to date. If you did a calculation down in the year to date, the lower section was the budget and about 5% the prior year. And um, I looked at 2020 as well, just to see you know, kind of what was going on. And we're down 2% um, uh, year to date and 3% prior year as well to 2020. So Mike was kind enough. I gave, I really learn, don't pretend to understand the entire water business. Um, and you know, they shared with me that we saw a big increase in 2020 due to COVID. And you know, maybe we just haven't covered to those same those levels. I also think that 2022 budget was um, pretty aggressive from what I can tell in 21 activity, which was a very dry year from the information. So um, like I said, we're running behind budget on revenues, usage revenues, and most of that is being driven by, I believe, um, 2022 was That is the information on the water usage or the single sheet. And then also in your packet is the financial statement. And on that, I just wanted to point out a few things. Um, the utility generated a hundred, um, the utility generated a hundred, approximately 135,000 of operating profit. That's um, sort of the middle of the page, the operating income. And you can see that is down both, both to prior year and to budget. Um, the wholesale water expense in these financials is an estimate. We don't have the open not have it at the time of the financial statement, so that is estimated in here. Um, as I mentioned, in relation to usage, revenue is down, and um, due to the lower usage previously mentioned, residential is and um, due to the lower usage previously mentioned, residential is down to budget and last year, uh, about $124,000 to budget and $195,000 to last year. And industrial is down about 96,000 to budget and 29 to last year. And sherry usage has been going down year over year. And um, their bills were averaging about 80,000 and now more in the $55,000 range. And then in irrigation, we have a similar situation, obviously, again, 2022 not being mutual use, 2 million gallons less in the second quarter of 2020. Reduction. Um, in the operating expenses, uh, the good news is revenues are down, but so are operating expenses. So in that section, one item I uh, was going to point out services, which basically is for consultants to change the water source. And um, year to date, we've only spent about 38,000 of that. So obviously with the project being delayed, we're not spending at the same rate. Um, and that was mostly uh, Clark, Deep, and Baxter Woodman. A bit of applied technology, applied technology. Capital expenditures years, year to date. Um, $49,000 has been spent on water meters. And as Mike mentioned, we have about 73,000 that's encumbered, but not good. <laughs> get spent on um, in a purchase order. And then the other, there was another 49,000 um, in a purchase order. And then the other, there was another 49,000 approximately that's been spent year to date on the water tower activity. Um, the second, I think it was just the third. I just was gonna mention the cash. So it's the third, was gonna mention the cash. So it's the third page of the financial package. Um, the utility has generated $161,000 in cash here to date. And $194,000 of that has been spent on purchasing capital assets. And, and um, we are seeing an, a bit of an improvement in interest income. It's, um, the interest rates are increasing slightly, so we are seeing a bit more. So I guess it's yeah, tiny, but, but it, you know, improving a little bit. And um, basically, the cash. Uh, 
I don't know if I understood this correctly, but are we the money that we budgeted for meters that we can't spend as part of <laughs> part of this year? So we're holding it in reserve for. We know. have a we have a yes we have a purchase order out there, so the okay. the funds are encumbered and okay. that will carry over Good. to the new year. But, Thank yeah. you. Uh, so that's just a brief overview of the financials year to date. And then the last part of the discussion of the lecture, the last item, I guess it's D under or C under new business, is the budget. And so those would have been the two um, staple packets that we got. And so the there's one that's printed more from a budget appropriation um, it is as personnel separate from uh, supplies and those kinds of things and then the, the one that's a portrait style that one is more along the lines I think of what you're used to seeing where it's by department by where you know it's like the activities that we do source of water treatment that kind of thing so that's the one that I um, sort of wrote my you know uh, discussion points on but obviously they equal um, and it, I didn't know if you, you know, if you wanted to look at all personnel, you could look at the one that is um, more like a typeset print, and if you want by by department. This one. So um, I don't. I'm assuming everybody knows, but we do not need to adopt the budget tonight. This is just um, for you to look at. Um, certainly, if you have time to review it and you have questions. And send them to Glenn or myself. Only if you have time to review it and you have questions, and send them to Glenn or myself and get them answered, we would then adopt the budget in the November, after November. If I could have these emailed to me, that way I can get them to Dan. Or not. Regarding the budget, um, so I used Paul's method for. Um, so he had a pretty thorough way of looking at it from a customer perspective. So how many customers, how many gallons, average gallons per customer rate, that kind of thing. And so I went through that process using one in 2020, 2022 year to date, trying to come up with a good estimate. And you'll see that what I have in the 2023 mayor recommended for uh, revenues is 6.2, uh, basically two, two and a half million dollars. It is down from 2022's budget. I would say it's aggressive. So it's also down a little bit to 2021. I did build in some new customers. So Paul had 160 some new customers built in, but I think some of that residential building hasn't hit us yet because in 2022 we only have about 55 new about 55 new customers in residential. So I built it into 2023. Assume those people are gonna. Normally, we usually see in the budget a statement that kind of gets us basically an income statement that tells us where we're positive. Oh, it, it's there, so if you go to the very end of it, oh, it it's there, so if you go to the very end of it, which we are not net one? positive. <laughs> which, which, this one or this? Either one. Oh, if you go to the last page, you'll see a position. Uh, it is called. Keep the negative four hundred twenty. You got it. Net of revenues and appropriations. So basically, revenues are estimated at six point eight seven one million dollars, and expenditures or appropriations are seven point two nine one. Um, so we are currently what is built in here is some borrowing for the water tower. So we've rebudgeted the water tower, and we have about one hundred and thirty seven thousand dollars in debt, and then. This sort of sets us up for the rate rate It's kind of because okay, in, in the past what we've tried to do is on the operating side of it, and we'd always be hundred thousand or plus that. So it's a little weird plus that. So it's a little weird to. I understand. I mean, it's almost like we understand the other things, and I guess you're going to argue that they're operating, but. We don't normally plan for losses. Right. And this, it, this, I think the way that we built this, we were trying to say, 
we don't, don't want to build in the price increase yet because we have to do the rate increase, right? So we're assuming the same rates, um, but we are presenting it as such that we have a reason to have a rate. We, we need to go forward. And so do you know what percentage rate increases would be overall? Get it back to roughly, roughly 100,000 so surplus? Peggy and I just, I mean, just a really rough calc, somewhere between five and seven. And if you break the difference between year to year, what I heard you say is basically the one tower are the two things there. Correct. 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 And um, you know, I, I did have some we have a few other <coughs> things in the capital budget, but nothing major. Um, you know, water meter replacements, another hundred and seventy five thousand to keep that program going. We have the water leak survey built keep it over the year seventy five thousand expenditure also for the connection. So, so the water leak survey comes in every year. We did this about five years ago. So we found a lot of leaks in the system. And knowing how expensive our water is, it's time to redo that again and find more leaks. We can find them before they get you. So you're the you're the financial guru, but I'm okay. I'm really hung up on that we can't show some of those other things are extraordinary expenses and extraordinary expenses and you can capitalize that stuff, right? You will capitalize those expenditures when we you know when the water tower gets in you know, the service. In, um, so we're going to expense all this stuff and then we're going to capitalize it after the fact. The, the the biggest expense is the interest, half million dollars, and that's the big. Expense. What interest rate did you assume? Um, I think Peg, let me find it. Four or five percent. We were looking at some state. Yeah. 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 Um, we used four percent. The state trust fund rate was coming at five. So And I completely understand your apprehension, and we've had. I mean, I think if we when we built other things, we've had. I mean, I think if we when we built other things, we haven't spent the budgets haven't spent it. And I think I do recall. I remember the last big spending we have the other. Well, the other tower, the other tower, the one we posited there. Or I think yeah. The other thing that we did that was somewhat costly were the pumps. Yeah, the pumps. pumps. Not near as expensive as the water tower. I only went back to 2019. I remember seeing a year where there was negative, um, but it had it was at zero. Well, the, the Drexel Towers got it like 10 years ago. That's the one, yeah. Oh, yeah. The tower? The tower? The station? The tower was built in the booster station. Yeah, the booster station was the last. The booster station was the last big expense of it. I mean, are we, we still have enough reserve to absorb. Oh, absolutely. 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 And the expectation would be that we would put forward the rate case and the negative end result. <coughs> but it would be a 10% increase. It would be a 10% increase. <laughs> <laughs> Let's hope not. 10% increase would better population generation. Better population. 
population change. Especially as we're trying to share that we're long term going to make states better. So, is there still a way to? Is there still, we are running a profitable operation without those extraordinary expenses. Basically, reflect it, stopping an operation. Pull yeah, do, do something where, you, and then you have these extraordinary expenses that you add. Okay. It's going to make us feel a whole lot better. Fair. Add. Okay. It's going to make us feel a whole lot better. Fair enough. Because if that, that number's if that number's not plus a hundred thousand or more, I don't think we're going in the right direction yet. Agree, guys? Yeah, I would agree. I think another thing to point out is you know the point of view had the discussion it is achievable that Franklin can continue to grow, but the overall water consumption is on a downward spiral. I think it doesn't make sense to me to it <laughs> put up 700 new apartments and there's a toilet in every single one. And, and, and Jesse, Jesse wasn't here to stop us from mentioning company names, but almost every company is trying to reduce the water. Sure. Okay. So, what is that? Which plan? Yeah. And I can work on. Uh, presentation or um, basically try to put it in a format or comfortable. I would encourage you if you have any questions, drop us an email and um, but that way she can be prepared next month. Okay. I do know Gary Evans. That way she can be prepared next month. Okay. I do know Gary Evans. Actual basis, we were at work. We did end up on an actual basis. Right. But that was because of an unplanned right. situation. Exactly. So. Right. But that was because of an unplanned right. situation. Exactly. So otherwise we were this is planned, but it's best for it happen that way. Right. It's fun. It's just like from an operational standpoint. Do you, you want to give up your feet? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> to help us get the budget spent. Just teasing. Thank you. Oh, we got a collection of lots. Oh, too. yes, we were get this. Larry, I guess Larry and Dan. <laughs> <laughs> so, so when Dan called me and told me he couldn't be here, he did indicate that he was perfectly happy with the current place, but obviously uh, he's not here to force his displeasure being nominated. So. <laughs> Are you happy with the current environment? I am. Are you sure? <laughs> Yes. Okay, because otherwise there's no sense of pending this stuff off. We just <laughs> deal with it and get on with the show. Yeah. Okay. Do you want to make a motion? We can do the two of us together. I make a motion that we move forward with the uh, elected positions as they currently are. Okay. Right. Is that an adequate motion for you? Of course for me. Okay. Second. We have a motion. We need a second. Yes, we have a second. Well, motion been made and second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. We used to pen this off when we didn't have enough people. And it doesn't yeah. There's no gain out of it at all. I don't think Larry wants to be back. No, he's always willing to do it when you're absent. Be absent. Okay, we now need a motion to adjourn. I'll make a motion to adjourn. Second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. aye.